West Virginia. I want to go back to the land I love, where the skies are blue and the birds sing too. Take me back to West Virginia. One day while passing by Vault 76, we see something new. Something strange. There's got to be a way in there. Maybe... Wait, a vault dweller? H hey there! Whoa, whoa. Just a friend here, not a threat. Just had some questions for you. You came out of the vault, right? I thought it was empty. Wait, is the door still open? The door's sealed tight. No one's getting in. God damn it. It's probably empty now. Doubt anyone's still there. Son of a bitch, we missed our chance. We really needed that. What's your interest in Vault 76? My partner and I need a way into that vault. We got a tip from the Wayward. Heard of the place? A new bar down the road. So this guy told us that... After you gave him the last of our caps? And he said that inside that vault is the... You know, that's where the big one is. Our last chance to turn our lousy luck around. We find a couple of options here that can impact how the conversation proceeds. We can say, the big one? What are you talking about? You know, the thing that brought everyone back. The treasure. There's a treasure out here? Well, yeah, there was this big broadcast, but shouldn't you know it was in there? I told you, Lacey. The guy was scamming us. Or we can lie and say, Oh yeah, the big one's in there all right. We managed to trap it, but I barely made it out with my life. Wait, what? Ay, pendeja, she's jerking you around, Lacey. Face it, we got scammed. But those were the last of our caps. No, someone has to know something. We're just gonna stick it out until we find them. Wonderful. Look, thanks for... whatever. Now, unless there was... something you needed? If we lied to her, and we then say, Want to tell me what this big one you're up here looking for is? She responds, I certainly could, but since you decided to yank our chains, I'm gonna say no. But if instead we were honest with her, she says, Happy to tell you what I know, which isn't much. Someone made a broadcast not too long back about there being some kind of treasure buried in Appalachia. We don't know what, we don't know where. But with people as desperate as they are, it's meant everyone with a functioning radio has come back to try and see if they can get a piece of it. Monsters or no? Guy we met at the Wayward. Carter, I think was his name? He gave us a couple of leads to chase down. In exchange for all our money. Up to us now to make something of them. What can you tell me about the area? About Appalachia? Other than it's a graveyard? There's that. We haven't been here real long, but from what we've been able to piece together, the area got hit pretty hard. Not long after, well, these things showed up. The Scorched. The Merciless. They seem to have cleaned up whoever the bombs might have missed. Without people around, everything else has gone haywire. What's the world like out there? We both came over from Virginia. Well, what was Virginia? There's a lot more hot zones that way. And the few spots that are livable, well, they got picked clean fast. I mean, Appalachia's dangerous, really dangerous. But it's better than where we've been. If we have a brand new character, we find an option to say, you wouldn't have a spare weapon, would you? They didn't give you a weapon? I guess I've got something I could spare. Here. And she gives us a machete. And if we haven't collected the Overseer's holotapes yet, we find an option to ask, did you see another vault dweller go by? An Overseer? And if we responded with a lie to her earlier, she's not too keen to answer our questions. Maybe I did. Or maybe you should ask the thing you've got trapped inside the vault. I'll be going now. Watch yourself out there. So, these two settlers came back to Appalachia because they got word of some nearby treasure. But we've been exploring Appalachia for well over a year. We've found a lot of cool stuff, but nothing I would really call a treasure. 
Who is it that's broadcasting about a treasure here in Appalachia? And could it be true? Lacey mentioned a fellow by the name of Carter, operating out of the nearby Wayward Pub. Our best bet to find some answers is to head to the Wayward to see if we can find this Carter. Now, for this series, I'm not going to be able to explore every dialogue option like I typically do in my Fallout lore series. And that's due to the nature of Fallout 76 Wastelanders. As an online game, I can't quick save and go back to explore the consequences of making other decisions. During conversations, you pass points of no return, making it impossible to go back and explore some of the other options without creating three, four, or even five other characters and going through the entire game with each. So for this series, I'll do my best to cover as much of the dialogue as I can, but we will miss some things and I won't be able to cover every possible outcome. The Wayward is a new restaurant and bar that we now find south of Vault 76, on the road leading to Flatwoods. Just outside, we find a Brahmin pen, and inside the pen is a sentry bot wearing a distinctive paint scheme. Exhalation of air through nostrils. <laughs> A sentry bot that thinks it's a Brahmin. Cute. We see that the Wayward is a series of caravans that have been stacked on top of each other and pieced together. When ready, we can climb onto the porch and head through the front door of the Wayward. Lady, I will paint the wall. Honey, you picked the wrong time to get a drink. What are you? Hey, who the hell are you? Whoa, whoa, what's going on here? None of your damn business. What's going on is that this one seems to think I know where this big treasure is and that I'm building my new bar out of refuse for fun. Lady, this is your last warning. Our crew is getting that treasure. And I will happily send you both to the great goddamn beyond if you don't start explaining where I can find what's ours. Tell me about this treasure. Maybe we can work something out. Treasure's our crew's business, not yours. And unless I start getting answers right now, I'm gonna start shooting people. Crew? Are you hiring? Hiring? You serious? You got a gun in your face and the first thing that comes to mind is picking up a side gig? Hmm. Guts like that might take you places. What say you and I finish shaking down this broad and then... I told you it was gonna end badly. Smart little distraction there, honey. Though I am hoping you're here to play nice. Don't want my people to have to dig any more graves today than they have to. Or, of course, we can always simply attack. I told you it was gonna end badly. Now, I'm hoping you're here to have a drink and play nice. I've had a gun pointed at me more than enough for one day. Either way, when ready, we can talk with this Duchess, whose name, for some reason, rings a bell. Huh. Well, not exactly the introduction to the wayward I would have hoped for. Well, sorry about that, darling. First round's on me. Name's Duchess. There's something I could do for you. Well, that Duchess gives us some of Duchess's Dram, a brand new alcoholic consumable. It heals 80 hit points at the cost of two intelligence. What was all that about? He said something about a treasure? Your guess is as good as mine, sweetheart. He busted in here saying I needed to turn over the location of some fellow named Crane, who I guess I must have served at some point or another. Since then, a steady stream of miscreants has been making my life irritating. Not exactly good for a budding business. What can you tell me about the area? Not a whole hell of a lot. We only just got back here ourselves. A hundred years ago, before the bombs, this was a popular little highway between two of Appalachia's biggest cities, Morgantown up north and Charleston to the south. We set up here hoping it might relive that fate, but so far all we've gotten is trouble. A hundred years ago before the bombs? Well, the bombs only dropped 26 years ago. I'm sure the highway was popular a bit less than a hundred years ago, but at any rate... At this point, we can offer our services by saying, you're looking for help dealing with these thugs? Now that you mention it, I could use an extra pair of hands. 
tapes. Or, if we haven't found the Overseer's holotapes yet, or if we have a brand new character, we find an option to say, I'm looking for the Overseer of Vault 76. Have you seen her? Overseer, huh? So you must be the one. No, I haven't seen her, but I have heard her. My people found a tape she left behind for one of her dwellers at that camp across the way, though it is a bit out of date now. Maybe you're the one she left it for. I'm happy to hand it over. Though, now that we've drifted naturally onto the topic of helping one another, maybe there's something you could do for me in return. And you'll give me the Overseer's tape in exchange for what, exactly? Just agreeing to lend us a hand in a little diplomatic intervention. See? That boy we put down? He's not the first of his crew to roll in here. But I want him to be the last. Normally, I'd send my people out to clean house. But my muscles run off, so I don't have the bodies to spare right now. But I'm willing to pay good money if you put an end to this for me. So, what do you say? Well, why not send your friend over there? Primarily, I... Primarily because your security, other than me right now, are one former contractor and a robot that has no guns and thinks it's a cow. To not put too fine a point on it. So I could absolutely use another set of hands if you're willing to lend them. Well, what do you know about them? Only that they want something from Crane. But I think we could use that to our advantage. That is, if you're doing this job for me. And you promise you'll give me the Overseer's tape if I help you with this gang? Sure will. Throw some caps your way, too. How much are you paying? Fifty caps if you can get the job done. You want me to kill them? I don't care how you deal with them. Sweet talk, string up their leader by his ears. Hell, buy them all ice cream sandwiches. Whatever you can do to get them to stop harassing us is fine by me. I'd like to hear your plan first. Only seems fair. The details, then. Now, each of these boys came in asking after Crane. I'm thinking we can make that work for us. How would you grab the attention of a bunch of single-minded thugs? Here we find a number of options. I tried two. We can pass an intelligence check of two to say, You want me to pretend to be Crane, don't you? Well, aren't you a smart cookie? And I think I know just how to do it. And with that, she walks off to work on something. Or we can pass a charisma check of no greater than one to say, Mail invitations, maybe? That's what my mom did for my birthday parties. Though, I guess no one came to those either. Oh, darling. Um, see, as fine as that idea is, you know, I was thinking we could take a different tack. Just give me one second. Either way, she walks to the table behind her and starts fiddling with some schematics. Uh, okay, I think I'll just... Uh... I just want you to know, architecture ain't exactly my forte. Huh, not half bad. So what I have chicken scratched together here for you is the schematic for one custom-made Crane Treasure Hunting Inc. sign. If I didn't butcher the plans too bad, it's got a little system built in that'll make sending out an advertisement and getting this gang's attention a snap. You just need to build it, use the tape it spits out to tell the world you're open for business, and then convince any punks that show up to tell you where their boss is hiding. They did teach you all how to build from schematics up in that vault of yours, didn't they? How did you know I was from a vault? You vault boys and girls carry yourselves different, like you matter. Plus, your pit boy was a dead giveaway, but that's beside the point. You think you can work from these schematics? We can say, sure, I know how to build structures from schematics. That's the spirit. Hey, if you need a refresher, good old Morty Mort can help you out. What are you on about, Mordecai? Hey, nah, I'm not bragging or anything. Well, I've got some tapes that cover that very subject. Oh, Mort, not the tapes. Well, you find yourself wanting a refresher? Talk to Mort. Or we can say, build a sign? Are you crazy? I don't know how to do that. Ah, oh, damn. Okay, okay, let's see, new plan. We paint all the Brahmin. 
And then we... Touch us. Plan's fine. I can walk them through how to build it. How's that exactly? I was hunkering down for quite some time waiting for this headless monster thing to clear off on my last ammo hunt. Ended up reading some old training materials best time and guess what? Made some tapes on it. Oh, Mort. Not the tapes. You have a better option? Not one that doesn't involve painting all my cattle. There you go, I suppose. You can talk to Mort. Of course you're gonna need materials, but we should have enough lying around to cover you there. Get you together a little care package. Throw some rations in there too, so you don't starve on me. And so you know, you might have to break some of this scrap down for parts. But I can spot you some workbench materials too, since you're doing me such a big one. Who knows? Maybe you'll learn something while you do it. Now, you ready to get this show on the road? If we didn't agree to help in exchange for the Overseer's tape, we find an option to pass a two-charisma check to, say, construction, scrapping, and dealing with thugs? You're gonna need to pay more for all that. It is a lot to ask. Fine. I could do 75. But that's as high as I'll go. That means you're up to the task? Let's do this. Hot dog. Be good to have those dolts off our back at long last. Just make sure, once you find out where they're hiding, that their leader gets the message. The Wayward gets left alone. With that, we complete the quest Wayward Souls, and we begin the quest Hunter for Hire. Stop the attacks on the Wayward for good. Taking a look at Duchess's inventory, we see that she sells her custom-made dram, and we find a variety of other beverages. She also has a small selection of ammunition, with about 1,400 caps to barter with. Well, whether or not we need a refresher course on how to build a camp, we can head on over to talk to the ghoul, Mort, over here, to see what he has to say. Now, if we told him we didn't know how to build a camp... Crazy. Now, that is just crazy. They hand you vault kitties, all this fancy equipment, and then just throw you to the wolves. If, however, we told him that we already knew how to build a camp... Glad to hear vault Tech actually took care of some of their people. You hear these rumors, right, about him just throwing folks to the wolves. Here's some rations and a fancy suit. Good luck. Well, don't you worry that smooth little face of yours. You are in good company now. Because around here, we look after one another. Now what can I do for you? If, through the course of dialogue, we gave Mort the opportunity to kill Batter, the raider, we find an option to say, You killed that man! I did, and your eyes still work in case that's the reason you're bringing up the obvious. Look, the world's hard now. Better you learn that lesson real fast. Can I ask what happened to you? Allergies. Learned the hard way I can't stand within ten feet of a strawberry. <laughs> Come on, man, that's a joke. Truth is... I was outside on Doomsday. Now you see, I drove security, and I was coming back from a pickup in the truck when I feel this rumble, and then quiet, then a whole lot less quiet. And the truck was hit with this wind, and it was like someone dropped a hurricane on it. I can hear it battering the truck, bang, 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 like it's got a grudge against it. And then I unlock the door and into the back, and then, bang, I wake up, man, and it's crazy. Somehow, in the back of the truck, alive and kicking. All it cost me was my skin, and any opportunity for someone liking me for anything other than my lovely personality. And that was the day I became, well, they call us schools, not the most flattering name, but still, beats being vaporized. What's it like being a ghoul? I mean, it's got its advantages. Main one is that radiation rolls off me like water off a duck's ass. Can stride through a blast zone like it's a spring breeze. Also, means I can survive in situations that would turn a normal person into a TV dinner. The major downside? Well, shit, you're looking at it, right? Head to toe disfiguration. There's also, well, you might have seen them. Not all ghouls are sane. Not sure how it happens, why some ghouls lose their minds and others don't. But ever since I turn, there's always this nagging feeling just at the back of my mind that I will have to feast on humans! Rawr! Ser come seriously? Nothing? Shit, I thought it was funny. Overall though, being a ghoul, mixed bag. Can't say I'd recommend it as a lifestyle choice. So what's your job here? Don't have one. 
I'm an independent operator. When these folks need a hand or got an errand that involves running into radiation, they come to me. Rats, <laughs> they don't bother me anymore. In exchange, Dutch just lets me drink. It doesn't bother me too much about my tap. Really, about the best sort of setup a guy in my situation could ever ask for. Of course, sitting around looking like hamburger ain't all I do. Plans work out, I'll have all the drinking money I could ever need. But that ain't what you came here to talk about. Was there something else? You can teach me about using my camp? Listen, friend, you happen to be talking to the exact right person to fix your predicament. But if I'm gonna help you, I want something in return. When you want someone dead, just give me the name. Whoa, 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 not even remotely what I meant. Nah, you're gonna help me get rich. See, the folks who made it big off the gold rush, they weren't the prospectors. They were the folks that sold them their shovels. Now, I don't do shovels. What I collect is knowledge. I can go all sorts of places you folks with your rad sucking skin can't. So, I'm selling what I've got between my ear holes, and you're gonna test it for me. I made these hollow tips. Now, this sets all the info I dug up about that camp doohickey you bolters got. All I'm asking is you give them a listen and let me know what you think. These are tapes you recorded? With the voice you're speaking in right now? It's the only voice I got, so yeah, that's what you're gonna hear. Now you want them or not? Sure, I'll listen to them. You will? Oh, thank you. I mean, <clears throat> thanks. Just come back once you've taken them out for a test drive. Now, there anything else you wanted to chat about? Didn't have anything at the moment. Some other time then. Taking a look at our inventory, we find three new holotapes. In the first, Mort's Edutape number one, placing your camp. Son of a, what tiny fist that a rat built? Oh wait, oh wait, I think it's on. It's, hello? <clears throat> hello? This is Mort McCoy. And welcome to the first of Headmaster Mort's Edutapes. Today we're talking about your camp. Now, former vault resident or someone who killed a vault resident, let's start off with the basics. Placing your camp. When plunking down your camp, C-A-M-P, that's an acronym, for the first time, remember to, oh crap, where'd they end up? Oh, here we go. Remember to take the lay of the land. Consider the grade of the terrain, general defensibility and proximity to your surroundings. Could that cliff edge be used to protect your flank? You bet your chops it could. Once you've found the perfect spot, it's time to move on to the best part of working with your camp. Construction! Construction can be an intricate process, so a steady hand and an eye for detainment, <clears throat> details, damn, I had to get that one wrong, an eye for details are a must. You should take a moment to familiarize yourself with the camp's patented intuitive construction interface. But don't worry. We'll cover construction in gory detail in the next of Headmaster Mort's edutapes. So long. Get your chops. Come on, Mort, what, what, what was that? <laughs> next, we can listen to Mort's edutape number two, building at your camp. Hello, dedicated listeners. Welcome back to Headmaster Mort's edutapes. Today, in this second tape, we are talking construction. Now, the first step of construction is... Wait, what? Is that soda? Soda's red, right? Wait, oh. <clears throat> electing. First, electing what you're going to build. Once you've made that election, it's just three easy questions to construction success. One, is the location I've selected going to work for an object of the size and shape I'm building? Two, have I read the schematics thoroughly? And three, do I have all the required materials too? Who the hell bled on my notes? Saul! If I find that was you, you're gonna bleed on... What, whatever, just finish work. <clears throat> Short on materials? Loot the local junkyard, mills, and warehouses for parts. Missing a critical schematic? Your local vendors might have just what you're looking for. And on that note, this has been Headmaster Mort's Edutapes, Edutapes. See you.
you again soon. Solomon, so help me, this better be dead. Where are you hiding? And finally, we can listen to Mort's Edu tape number three, Powering Your Camp. Welcome back, lovely listeners, to Headmaster Mort's final tape in the camp series, Powering Your Camp. After listening to the second tape, you should already be well-trained enough to build a generator. If you haven't yet done so, I'll wait. Hi, uh, dude. Dude. Do do da. I do 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 da. Ah, screw it. All right, I, I'll assume you nailed it. Now, generators are the heart of your camp power system. Once your generator is built, all you need to do is connect it to the object that needs power with a wire. Though, be aware your wire will need a clear, unobstructed path to establish and maintain a direct connection. Some objects, however, like simple light bulbs, do not require a direct connection. All you need to do is run a wire from your generator to a power pylon. Place the power pylon near your lights, then voila, let there be lights! Well, this has been Headmaster Mort's Camp Construction Holotapes. Please check back with Headmaster Mort himself at The Wayward to learn more about his other exciting courses, including Mort, can I salute this? And Mutations, am I a monster now? And thanks again for listening. Ha, nailed it. Once done, we can check in with Mort. Oh, hey there. Looking forward to hearing what you thought of those tapes. Now, what do you want to discuss? I, uh, listened to your tapes. Did you now? What did you think? You're gonna be huge, Mort! Ha! Huh. <laughs> if I needed smoke blowing up my ass, I'd sit on a campfire, okay? Seriously, what'd you think? We can completely deflate this guy by saying, You know, I think you've got a real future as a producer. Let someone else handle the talking. And writing. And, uh, all technical aspects of the job. That bad, huh? Hmm. Well, thanks for listening to them, I suppose. Hopefully you got something out of them. Or we can say, they were rough, but they got better as you went. I mean, yeah, that's what I thought, too. I, I figured I'd do a couple more batches. I mean, I'll have this thing down. Headmaster Mort will be a household name before you know it. Thanks for being honest. Now, was there something else I could do for you? That's it, Mort. Some other time, then. All right, so we've got to stop raider attacks on the wayward, and to do so, we've got to find out where they're coming from by luring them to our camp. And we can lure them to our camp by crafting a new sign, the Crane Treasure Hunting Sign. But first things first, let's explore the wayward. The Wayward is a great little place to hit early on in our gameplay with a brand new character because we can walk away with a lot of foodstuffs and a ton of scrap for crafting. We can loot anything we want in the Wayward without making these guys angry. They're not going to attack us for picking up an empty bottle. We don't find much but scrap behind the counter. Moving south behind Mort, we find a number of crates stacked up in the corner. There's a bathroom here with one urinal and one toilet, and that's really it for the ground level. But we do find a staircase here that leads us up to a second floor. Here we find a big bear skin rug, and turning left we find a restricted area with a locked door that requires a key. Hmm, what could Duchess be hiding here? Turning north, we find Duchess's desk. There's nothing on top of it or in it, but behind it, we find a skill level two locked floor safe. After picking it, we find a holotape. Visit with Officer Whitehead. Maud? Jerry, to what do I owe the pleasure? Not a social call, Maud. They're coming. You want to be more specific? They who? B-A-D-T-F-L. The Bureau of Alcohol, Drugs, and No Fun is paying Welch a visit? Says who? Uh, says me, Duchess. You need to skip town, ASAP. You're a crooked cop, Gerald. Associating with known smugglers of firearms and illicit substances. 
can you be trusted? Why are you making this so hard? I'm trying to keep you out of jail. Jarrah, please. This hurts to watch. Can we just be honest with each other? Hey, I'll start. What are you... My friends, plural, at the Bureau, say you've been making some big claims about this Appalachian drug kingpin you're about to bring in. The one you're trying to get rid of so your new friends from Charleston can take your territory. But wouldn't you know, all that extra yammering got them looking into your finances and your house and your car. And they didn't like what they found. So yes, Gerald, they're coming. But no one's coming looking for me. And then we remember Duchess Welch, Drug Kingpin? In my series on the mining saga of pre-war Appalachia, we visited the town of Welch, and there we found holotapes that told the story of a pre-war drug dealer in Welch named Duchess. This holotape confirms it. The Wayward's Duchess and Welch's Duchess are one and the same. At some point, Duchess Left Welch has been gone for 26 years now and just recently came back. Why did she come back? We find a sliding door against the northern wall. It's Duchess's bedroom, but we don't find a key here, a terminal here, nothing that allows us to open up the locked door. What is she hiding? Well, we don't have answers now. To find some, we'll have to work with her. Heading to our camp, we can read the plan for the Crane Treasure Hunting sign and then craft it from the quest section of our settlement build menu. Broadcast tape issued. Please deposit data tape into any relay system terminal. Target mark. Even though it says it requires electricity, the sign deposits a broadcast holotape into our inventory as soon as it's crafted, even if it's not powered. Powering it isn't necessary for the quest, it just illuminates the sign. So, we've planted part one of the bait. Now for part two. We need to head to any broadcast tower. The one by the wayward works, but I'm heading to the one next to my camp. After clearing the tower, we can load the new broadcast holotape that we got from the sign we just created into the terminal. Presto Radio Systems Connection Buddy. Connection target detected. Initiate transmitter connection. Message unloaded. Initiating broadcast pause. Attention, all consumers. New business established. Please seek out Crane Treasure Hunting Incorporated to exchange goods and services. Initiate tagline. Follow the sign to Fortune. Broadcast complete. Follow the sign to Fortune. That should send some raiders our way. Heading back to our camp, we can wait a while to see who takes the bait. After some time, a treasure hunter arrives, and he calls out for Crane. Crane! You hear? Whoa. You're not Crane. The hell's going on here? We can say, you know Crane? He tell you anything about this treasure he found? Crane found the treasure? Holy shit. Where is he? Or we can say, where's your gang? Tell me or I'll eat your eyeballs. Whoa, whoa. I'm not with any gang. Crane has just been MIA for a while. I was hoping to check in with him. You know where he is? What can you tell me about Crane? Probably not much more than you. He came to Appalachia, not far back, hunting for the same treasure everyone else is. Last time I saw him, he mentioned something about an abandoned storage facility he'd picked up some details on, but... Beyond the general, he didn't share. Now, your turn. Where is he? That's none of your concern. Now get out of here. Fine. I'll find Crane myself. Thanks for nothing, prick. Or we can say, your guess is as good as mine. Last place he was spotted was this bar down the hill from Vault 76. The Wayward. The Wayward, huh? 
Might be I pay the place a visit. Oh, shit. I've got to get over to... Uh, not here. Good luck with those guys. With that, the treasure hunter turns tail and runs away. He ran away because we hear the shouting of a raider that has arrived at our camp. Cray! Come out, come out, wherever you are! This free radical raider makes a comment based on the quality of our camp. If we have a nice camp... Ukraine? Ugh. Quite the setup you got here. But if we have a meager camp... Ukraine? This it? Thought you were some kind of big shot. So, rumor is you've got information our boss wants. You tell me where this treasure is, and he's willing to leave you alone. Scout's honor. I'll share, but I want to join your crew. Now, where do I go to apply? How about you just tell me where the treasure is, and if I like what I hear, I'll tell you where you can hand in your application. We can lie and say, it's, uh, it's inside Vault 76. Yeah, that's it. You think we're idiots? The only thing in 76 are a bunch of wimpy, soft-shelled rich kids that got to nap away the apocalypse. Now, start flapping, or things are gonna get messy. No, you first. 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 No. You first. no. You first! No. Tell me what I want to know. No. You first. Okay, fine. We're at the West Virginia Lumber Company, okay? There. Now tell me where the hell the treasure is. Oh, I, uh, I have no idea where the treasure is. Well, I guess we'll just have to find the treasure some other way. Because you are dead! With that, they attack. Or, among a number of other options, we can pass a luck check of two to say, I bet your name is... Davy? Davy, you said you were gonna help me kill this one, right? Excuse me? How does this jerk know your name? You're working together. What? No! Can't you see they're full of- In which case the raiders attack each other, making it easier to pick them up. <laughs> If we resolve this by killing them, on the body of the first free radical, we find a note. Bring me Crane. Crane. Last spotted, the wayward. Sex, male, build, middle, dangerous. Allegedly not, but be careful. First person to get him to give up the location of this treasure gets a share of the overall take. But the raider made the mistake of using paper that had a watermark reading West Virginia Lumber Company and including its address. So even if we didn't get the location from the raider himself, this way we always walk away with the location. Now that we know where these free radical raiders are, we can bring the news back to Duchess at the Wayward. And before heading in, we find a fellow standing outside whom we missed earlier, Gide. Duchess is damn lucky you showed up when you did. Hope she comped you a drink or two. Look at you. Where'd you find that outfit? Not sure you even fit through the door. Bet you can go just about anywhere in that thing. Never could get Duchess to spill on what she did before the war. Got the distinct feeling I wouldn't like the answer. Heading inside, we can talk with Duchess. Well, you don't look too worse for wear. You managed to figure out where those miscreants are hiding. I had a thought. What if I decided I wanted to work for this gang instead of you? Well, honey, I'm not sure I'm a big fan of that line of thinking. But if we run along it, maybe those things don't need to be mutually exclusive. I just want those boys to stop threatening us. Now, if one of their own convinced them we weren't a threat, I'd be real indebted to that person. Might be I remember some things that could make their lives a bit more comfortable. But let's say we cross that bridge when we get to it. Now, did you find where these possible new friends of yours are hiding? Duchess, bring me your finest flannel. 
I'm heading to West Virginia Lumber. <laughs> Good to know. Then that's where their boss will be. You need to go- wait, 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 West Virginia Lumber? <laughs> that is not right. You misheard them for sure. And that's of concern. Why, exactly? Was wandering up that way not too far back. The lumber company? That place was overrun with a bunch of those big green bastards. Mutants. You've seen those Frankensteins. If this gang was able to clean those things out of the mill, Duchess, these guys might be tougher than advertised. Hmm. You got any recommendations on how you'd proceed? Well, I wouldn't go in guns blazing, unless you got some big guns. Could try and luck your way inside, maybe see if they want to talk to you. But there was this family I ran into up that way that I'm sure has had to deal with them already. There was also this, uh, let's say, special scrapper who was making some pretty bold claims about his knowledge of the mill. Wouldn't be a bad idea to check in with either of them. Huh. Tell me about this scrapper. Found him living in the stalls at Tyler County Fairground. Guy kept claiming he knew the best way to run the mutants out of the mill. But, listen, I couldn't get him this bill, Hal. Probably have a better chance he'll share what he learned with someone who still has an entire face. Tell me about this family. You'll find them at Anchor Farm, if these thugs haven't already run them off. But if they are still there, well, they've probably managed to work something out with them. Hey, it couldn't hurt to find out what it was. I think I've got everything I need. Well, that's a good thing, because that's all I've got. If you haven't already explored up that way, the fastest route back would be via Vault 76 and trekking north from there. And take care of yourself, all right? You're doing us a big one here. So, uh, we need to infiltrate the Free Radical Raider camp at West Virginia Lumber, formerly occupied by a bunch of super mutants. We could do it the old-fashioned way, running guns blazing, or we can talk with the Traveler at the Tyler County Fairgrounds or the family staying at nearby Anchor Farm. We'll have to explore both of those options to see what happens, but sadly, I am all out of time. We'll pick up right here where we leave off with the story of the Wayward in my next episode. I publish new Fallout videos each and every week on my channel, so if you don't want to miss the next episode, be sure to subscribe and to click that bell notification button. If you have already, but you still feel like you're missing out on YouTube notifications, consider following me on Twitter at Oxhorn. I update Twitter manually with every new piece of content that I publish. I have a shirt shop with completely unique designs that you can't find anywhere else. My designs come on shirts in a variety of men's, women's, and children's sizes, and in a wide array of colors. You can find them on other products as well, like smartphone cases, pillows, posters, mugs, stickers, prints, etc. So if interested, you can find a link to my shop in the description below, or you can click here. If you like what I do and you want to support me in a more personal way, consider becoming a patron on Patreon or a member here on YouTube. YouTube members and patrons on Patreon are becoming increasingly important as YouTube continues to make platform changes that make the future of YouTube monetization uncertain. So to all my YouTube members and patrons on Patreon, you have my sincerest thanks. I couldn't do this without you. But more than anything, I'm just so glad you're here watching this video with me today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you soon with more brand new videos.